Hey there, Holly Show listeners, Aaron Naboose here, and joining me on this episode is someone that I only recently met online, uh, but I hope to meet him in person for a good meal and some beer, uh, though I'm surprised that it took me this long to connect with him since not only does he have an awesome travel channel on YouTube, but he's a fellow San Diegan and a frequent Comic-Con attendee. Uh, when I first asked him to come on the show a few months ago, uh, he was approaching, I think, about 25,000 YouTube followers. Now he's fast approaching 30,000. Um, he's been putting in the hard work and providing great value to his community, which I'm happy to be part of. Uh, so I'm sure he'll be crushing that milestone fairly soon. Uh, please welcome to the show, JJ Manikis, otherwise known as JK Um Hey, man, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, Aaron, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me. And uh, I really appreciate all your support and uh, all our interactions over the past few months, whether it's on Twitter or on my uh, live chat. You know, it's been really cool to see you uh, around social media. And I'm glad that we're finally connecting on your uh, podcast to talk. Yeah, definitely. I think we do have some mutual friends. Um, so it's a small world. <laughs> nice. Yeah, maybe we can uh, figure out who they are. And. <laughs> Uh, definitely. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we're, we're both San Diegans, but uh, we, are you born and raised uh, in San Diego? Yeah, born and raised in San Diego. I was born in uh, Kearney Mesa at the Sharp Hospital where that big stork is off the 163. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, grew up in Mira Mesa. We moved there when I was four. Um, the first the four, four years of my life, I was pretty much in like uh, Mission Valley, Cerro Mesa area. And uh, what was uh, what was teenage JJ like? Uh, what movies, TV shows, books, video games, and and music uh, impacted you most back then? Man, when you say teenage JJ, I think about Back to the Future. Um, that's my all time favorite movie. Um, you know, growing up, I liked watching uh, the TGIF. You know, Full House, uh, Step by Step, Family Matters, all that stuff. Boy Meets World. That was my uh, that was my jam, <laughs> and uh, I'm all I was always into like the the WB dramas like like Dawson's Creek. I'm not gonna lie that I watched that that, <laughs> that stuff, but I always wanted to be like one of those. Uh, uh, when I grew up, when when, when I was uh, a teenager, I wanted to be like a TV show writer. Mm. <laughs> so were you uh, were you Team Dawson or Team Pacey? Uh, I was actually. As a kid, I was Team Dawson, and as I grew up, I realized it was more Pacey, <laughs> for sure. But uh, if I had it my way, it would have been Team JJ to have uh, a young Katie Holmes, for sure. Young young Joey Potter. Yeah, the dude that uh, played Pacey. I, I, I loved him on Fringe. I don't know if you ever watched Fringe. Oh, man, I love Fringe. Uh, that yeah. was a great show, man. Very underrated, in my opinion. And I think they, that show has a really nice cult following. Yeah, definitely. I, I do miss that show, and it, it ended way too early, for, for, from in my opinion. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think uh, you know, like it's hard for some people to follow like those types of storylines when you're messing with like you know science and different dimensions and stuff. But like, I thought that was a great show. I thought mm -hmm. they had a great cast. And um, it looks like you worked for the San Diego Chargers for eleven years. Um, I mean, what was your typical day like over there? And how did you put yourself on on that sort of career path? Yeah, man. Um, I, yeah, I worked for the Chargers for 11 years. I started off as a uh, public relations intern. I was only supposed to work there for the summer. And uh, they liked me so much, you know, all my knowledge about the team. I was, I was a lifelong, was a lifelong Charger fan. <laughs> San, <laughs> San Diego Charger fan. Let's just say key, that. Key, keyword San Diego. Keyword San Diego. Um you know, I, I started off as a PR intern. I was still going to SDSU, uh, San Diego State. And uh, my minor was television, film, and media. And they just happened to like what I was doing. You know, I, I interacted with the players really well. You know, I treated them just like any other person, any other coworker, any other friend. And I didn't look at them, except for LT. 
I, I, I didn't look at anyone else but LT as like just an, another coworker. But even with LT, you know, I was cool with. Eventually, like we built a really nice rapport and uh, became friends. But he was my idol, so like oh, I see. I had to act like cool in front of LT, but I still got all got all giddy when I saw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any? Uh, did you did you did you eat any OG's pizza with him? <laughs> OG's pizza, man. We we had a like our catering with the Chargers was awesome. Like we had Miguel's Cocina, uh, Pioe's, um, Old Town Mex, which I just ate at yesterday for Cinco de Mayo. Um, like they were all our caterers uh, and Phil's Barbecue here in San Diego. For those of you guys uh, that know all the San Diego food. They all catered the Chargers, so like, yeah, every now and then, you know, LT might be around sitting down at the lunch table, and we'd be eating some fills or something like that. <laughs> you have any uh, fond memories you'd like to share during your time uh, working with the Chargers? Oh, man. I mean, nothing beat 2008 when uh, they, they took us over to London, and we played the Saints. We played Drew Brees and the Saints. Oh, and we, wow. went on, we went on a yacht party, and literally like i don't know like you've watched a little bit of my channel so every now and then i dress up but it's not for like not not during the pandemic i wasn't dressing up nobody dressed up during the pandemic but uh i went on this yacht cruise uh wearing a uh, ascot <laughs> looking like a tennis player <laughs> and uh i was dancing with like the vp of the chargers and like these these older ladies and lt was just like dude who's that guy? And that's the first time he was like, who's this dude? And he's like, I see him around the facility all the time. And, uh, and that's when he, he, he nicknamed me, uh, the heat. So he called me the heat. Uh, every time I saw him from 2008 on, he'd see me on the hallway and we'd have that rapport. And we talked for like, I don't know, the rest of the night, like 30 minutes, him and his family, we were just hanging out. And that was one of my, my fondest memories with the, with the team and just all the relationships that were built, you know? Wow, that's awesome. Uh, speaking about relationships, I mean, you you built up quite a, a relationship with um, people that go to Comic-Con. Um, I think I was watching one of your videos, and I think you had met um, another YouTuber, I guess, who was from the Philippines at Comic-Con. So that was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Man. And we became, we've become good friends since then. It was so funny. Uh, his name is Jaco De Leon. His dad is a very popular... Uh, TV host in the Philippines for a show called Eat Bulaga. It's been going on for like years, like at least 20 years, maybe even longer than that. And uh, yeah, he actually thought we were cousins because like, because like he thought I, I knew him as like, like he, because he has a lot of like family here in San Diego. <laughs> but then like, he just didn't know that like, you know, I was a real big uh, watcher of uh Will Dasevich, he's a big YouTuber in the Philippines. He's from San Francisco. He's half Filipino. Um, and uh, I saw him from there. And I knew he was over at Comic-Con. We just hit it off. We became friends. And he was with another YouTuber, Daniel Marsh, who does all this like hyperlapse uh, videography. And he's also big in the Philippines. He's half Irish. Um, and we became friends. And from there, like, from there, like every Comic-Con um we've been hanging out he even stayed at the house uh in 2019 the, was it no yeah 2018 he stayed at the house and then uh 2019 we linked up again during comic-con oh when was your first uh, San Diego comic-con oh man you know i i don't i don't say my age but when i was 16 and i'm in my 30s let's just say that so <laughs> i was 16 it was my first ever Comic Con. My cousin Randy, who I go with every year, he's the one that introduced me to Comic Con. And like, I'm not gonna lie, like when I was a teenager, I was like, my best friend, he'd always go to Comic Con and be like all about it. And I was just like, what's this Comic Con thing? I'm not really that much into comic books, blah, blah, blah. And then everybody kept saying, dude, you love pop culture though. You love TV shows. You love all that type of stuff. You will love Comic Con. And uh, yeah, my first Comic Con, I was 16 years old. My cousin took me, and uh, we had media passes because back then my uncle worked for the Union Tribune. And oh, nice. uh, it was so easy to get media passes. So we'd get access to everything back then. And uh, I remember meeting my first celebrity um, on the showroom floor, and it was Seth, uh, what's his name? Seth Green. Seth uh -huh. Green from Buffy. Yeah. 
And he was so cool, Robot, man. Robot chicken, right? Yeah. He was cool, man. Like, he talked to us. Nobody was bothering him on the floor. We were the only <laughs> two that knew who he was. I, I, I only remembered him because I watched a show called Birds of Paradise. You remember that show? You, you remember that show back in the day? It was like a show that took place in Hawaii. And he was like one of the brothers on the it, show. It, it sounds kind of, it sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I met Seth Green and then, uh, Allie Baggett. She was like a, like an import. Oh car yeah. Model. I, yeah. I, I remember when she used to, she, she used to exhibit over there. Yeah. So like that was my first, uh, ever comic con. And I think I've gone almost every year since I might've only missed maybe one or two, but I'm pretty sure I've gone to every comic con since I was 16. Uh huh. And, um, What's what's a typical day like for you at, at the con? I mean, what what kind of attendee are you? Do you like going to the, the panels? Are you a collector? I am Mr. Pop Culture and Autographs. I'm all about uh-huh. the 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 uh, meeting the meeting people over there. So I'm usually lined up in the general line camping out with friends. And that's like, you know, really fun time bonding with friends and, you know, sw- switching in and out of line. Um, and then, you know, early in the morning, I'm usually at the CWWB line trying to get autographs I want. And then uh, whatever, depending on whatever it is, it's, it's so much harder to get autographs now because it's I, I think they made it all automated the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. So like, you, you, you know, you already know you don't even have to fall in line anymore. But, you know, there's some there's some booths like abc that will hand out tickets or you know the walking dead booth that's pretty much impossible to get tickets but you can fall in line and try um but there's still some places where you can get uh you know uh, get in line for autographs and that's kind of what i do i like i like meeting like collecting tv show posters and and all that through the years um the wb has basically been my my go-to line all these years nice um i guess I saw one of your videos and you said you said you're a big Berlanti fan. So, <laughs> yeah, the the whole Flash, Arrow, Arrowverse. You know, Stephen Amell is awesome, man. Like when uh, when when the Arrow first started, like I went to their first ever signing and I and I talked to Amell, and and uh, he was so cool and and so nice and and same with like uh, with uh, Barry Allen, Grant Gustin. Like they were, they're awesome dudes. And, uh, ever since then I was like, yo, I'm supporting these shows and I'm going to be all about it. And I, I, I do like, I, I've always liked the flash. I've always liked the, the green arrow. So, you know, it was really cool to meet those guys multiple times. And, uh, at the time, you know, uh, nerd HQ was going on and uh, Zachary Levi, AKA Chuck was, was running nerd HQ. And I went to the very first one. And I thought that was cool. I thought Nerd HQ was was awesome Un- until it blew up and it just got too too big for its own <laughs> uh, for its own good. Right. Um, as someone who's been to Comic Con quite a few times now, um, what are some helpful tips that you'd like to give to somebody who's maybe coming to San Diego uh, for Comic Con for the very first time? <laughs> I, gu- I guess we can sort of break it down into maybe a few Comic Con tips and maybe a few San Diego tips. Yeah, so so depending, what what type of comic con tips do you want? Like, do you want like access tips, or do you want like just like just your overall type of uh, experience type tip? I guess we'll do the overall experience type tips first. Well, first things first. Tell everybody to bring some uh, Axe Effect or extra deodorant and take a shower in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's that that that's a tip for everybody's. Just you know hygienic um well-being <laughs> for sure um but i would you know you know i would say like i don't like crowds so i don't like being in the showroom much um when it's super crowded so like i would try to be in the showroom or either early uh early in the day or late in the afternoon when it's about to close that's when i like to be there and then like obviously you're not going to be able you're you're not going to avoid the crowds all the time and sometimes you have no choice because you know you might have to go to an autograph signing or pick up a toy or you know you're just trying to get somewhere um but yeah save you know save those crowded walks for you know for for when you need to and don't just be you know wandering wandering aimlessly and just get caught in a caught in a crowd and also the back of the convention center um is really great 
I think, uh, you know, the sales pavilion, uh, that area, it, you know, you, it gets a little hot um, on some comic cons and you're going to want to hang out, you know, upstairs above hall H that those are great areas. There's places where you can hang out and, and there won't be that many people. Now you mentioned access tips. What were you alluding to? So access tips would be like, you know, if, if, you're going there for getting autographs or if you're get, going there to get your, your Funko pops or you're going there to get, you know, certain access to a panel. Like my tip for that would be you got to know ahead of time, like two weeks ahead of time, um, what you want to do and, and kind of map out your four days if you're, do, you're doing or your five days if you're doing preview night and uh, figure it out. If like you have to line up to sit down at a panel, then make sure you know that and don't be surprised that, uh, you know, you're walking into a panel and you find out that you can't get in because um, a lot of people, uh, you know, spend the night um, or even two nights sometimes just to get in the Hall H. I mean, I'm sure you know that. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Hall Eight show, so you you know how well, it's, uh, it's it's crazy kind of funny it because <laughs> it's kind of funny because that we're an ironic kind of uh, uh, podcast and, and blog, like we we sort of uh, uh, put the showcase on indie creators, so we don't really do a lot of the mainstream stuff. So like I haven't been a Hall H in forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I'll stop in the Hall H every now and then. Um, you know, my friend Jacko, he knows people from like the Philippines and stuff that could get us access um, like, and, and they'll give us passes to where we can walk in through the side and there's like, you know, reserved seats for us. So like in the past, that's, that's worked out well, um, you know, and then like later on in the afternoon, after like all the crazy panels have ended, like, you know, back in the day, it was Twilight and, you know, the big movies, like, you know, The Rock would be showing his newest movie or something. Um, after that, you know, people start filtering out. And like, I remember this one Saturday night, I was literally like stumbling out of Bubs, which is by uh, Petco Park. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I walked into Hall H and I was able to see the whole CW presentation of uh, the Berlantiverse. So I got to see all the panels of Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, and Legends of Tomorrow. And I was just sitting there, you know, like a few beers in and just enjoying myself. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've been at Bubs. I mean, I, I missed their their tater tots. Oh, man. And you know, like every three visits, if you check in on Yelp, they used to give free tater tots. Every three. Oh. Every three. I don't know if they do it anymore, but I know they used to do that where you check in on Yelp and they give you those free tots. Okay. Now, let's just, let's just say that um, Comic-Con has come and gone and um, a person that's that went to it for the first time is in San Diego for the first time. And he's that person's chilling here for, for maybe a, a week after Comic-Con. Uh, what do you recommend that they do? Well, I think uh, if you're here a week after Comic-Con, that Monday is definitely a detox by the pool at your hotel. <laughs> for <'Cause>, sure. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, like I need a few days to recover after four days, five days at Comic-Con. So I would, I would find a nice resort I'm sure the rates go down after after that Monday, after that Sunday Comic Con. Find a nice resort, switch hotels, get out of downtown, maybe go down to Mission Bay or go up to Carlsbad or something. And, uh, you know, just relax. Um, if you like drinking beer, there's a lot of breweries here in San Diego. Um, go over to Coronado, you know, uh, rent a bike or get bring, bring yourself some e-wheels. And uh, cruise around Coronado. It's a beautiful area over there. And uh, just enjoy San Diego, you know. Hit up all the spots like Balboa Park. Hit up, uh, you know, La Jolla. All the touristy things. You don't have to spend money uh, uh, necessarily unless you want to go to places like the, the zoo and uh, SeaWorld. But, uh, but, like, you know, try all the food. A lot of great food. I mean, as you can see in my videos, I focus on a lot of food. And there's there's a nice... A melting pot of different types of foods here in, in San Diego. So I would just I would just say, hey, um, hang out by the beach, hang out by your pool, and uh, spend a whole week just just enjoying San Diego. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I live here, and there's still so much that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. And like, um, I'm I'm sure you can attest to this. It's like 
you go to different parts of San Diego and, and things are, are evolving. Like, like look at Del Mar Heights, Carmel Valley area. Like all these new places are, are, are coming up like one Paseo. There's, it's, it's a nice luxury, um, area with a lot of great places to eat, like, Harlan Brewing and Salt and Straw and they have a Shake Shack there. So it's like there's new things popping up and then there's old things that like you just discovered too. Like I, I just went over to uh, Vista and I, I discovered the uh, mission over there, uh, San Luis Rey. And I was like, I've never been to this my whole life and I've lived in San Diego my whole life. <laughs> yeah, there's still so much to do. And San Diego County is such a, a large area. Oh man, it's huge. Like I still haven't gone to Fallbrook, which is kind of <laughs> like the Northern line. And I, I heard right. like downtown Fallbrook, old town Fallbrook is cool. And then you start hitting Temecula, which is technically Riverside already, but people still, you know, say Temecula is almost like the San Diego wine country, but it's not really, it's, you know, it's LA's now, you know, it's technically a Riverside area, but you know, San Diego's also got vineyards. There's a vineyard that's reached out, out to me in Vista that, I'll be covering in the next couple months. Oh, and then, cool. Um, there's all other vineyards in places like Ramona, near Julian. So, yeah, it's crazy. There's so many parts of San Diego that's still untouched. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was work, working up in Carlsbad at an agency uh, a few years ago, or a couple years ago. And, um, like, prior to that, I hadn't been to Oceanside in maybe 10 or so years. And, like, it's changed so much. Like, there's so much to do there now. Yeah, Carlsbad is just really is like if when people ask me where's family, a great family place to stay on a vacation, I would always tell people go to Carlsbad because it's a nice mix of everything. You know, you can have the kids go to Legoland, um, you know, there's strawberry picking uh, during the se- the strawberry season. Um, and then the, the Carlsbad flower fields are awesome. You got the windmill food hall. You got an outlet center there. Um, right. the beach <laughs> the, the beach i haven't even mentioned the beach yeah right and uh there's bars breweries and restaurants all everything you can check out you can leave the kids at the resort and you know go out go out with your husband or wife or you know and and have a good time in carlsbad carlsbad village is awesome it's just a mm-hmm. nice nice area yeah i guess we'll go ahead and get into uh, education um when and why did you start uh, your YouTube channel? Um, and why is traveling around the world and, and documenting it important to you? Uh, why do you love what you do and what drives you to create? Oh, man. You know, the whole thought of, of starting this YouTube channel was started around 2013. Um, I always loved watching the Travel Channel. I've always loved watching... Anthony Bourdain. There was oh, this. Yeah. Sh- there was this show uh, on Mark Cuban's HD channel called uh, Mojo. Do you remember that channel, Mojo? I heard of it, but I never watched it. Yeah, um, there was a show from a comedian called Zane Lamprey. Okay, and I've uh, heard of him. he did a show called Three Sheets. It's a you know twenty four minute show where he would go to a different country. He'd, he'd explore the drinking culture and then he'd end the show with like a little food vlog of uh, hangover foods. So he'd be like drinking the whole night. And then the, at the end of the show, he'd be, uh, he'd, he'd go to a nice uh, like pho restaurant or where, depending on where he's at in the world, you know, he'd, he'd get a Greek Euro in Greece. And that show really actually was the thing that motivated me to, to become um, Jake, uh, think of Jakeation. And when I, when I went, went on a trip with uh, uh, three of my friends in 2013 to Spain. It was my first time in Spain ever. Um, some, I think, I don't know how Jaycation, I think, you know, back then hashtags just started like getting big and I was like, Oh, what's a good vacation hashtag. And I was like, Oh, Jaycation would be cool. So I think I just hashtag Jaycation as my, uh, my like vacation hashtag for, for that Spain trip. And then I said, Hey, you know what? Maybe, you know, this YouTube thing, I see a couple of like like travel vloggers on YouTube. Uh, there, there were a couple, Hey Nadine and uh, the Vaga Brothers, who I eventually met at a couple of uh, VidCons. And uh, I was like, okay, I like what they're doing, but, you know, I'm kind of shy about this because I work for the Chargers. I don't want people to think that, you know, um, oh, I'm doing this on the side. You know, they, they get a little, back in the day, it was a little weird. Um, I, it's crazy that I'm saying 2013 was back in the day. 
<laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people thought it was weird to be on YouTube. So it, 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 it manifested in me for a couple of years. And then in 2014, I went on a, uh, I went on a Kentucky trip to Greece and I said, you know what, I'm just going to film this and I'm going to act like, you know, this is, uh, with the intention of me, uh, putting this out on YouTube and just, uh, sharpening my skills because, you know, I, I took editing classes, television, film, media classes in SDSU. And I wanted to sharpen those skills because at the time with chargers, I wasn't doing that type of stuff. And I was like, well, I went to college for this. I need to, I, I want to use my college skill set. So, you know, I made one video in Santorini and it was, you know, it was my very first Jcation video, uh, Jcation Santorini. It was like a travel guide. I used copyright music. I used, I used, you know, all this stuff, uh, iMovie. And it was just the, like, I look at, look back at that video. I don't cringe, but I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I've gone f- long and far with this video, with, with this channel. And, uh, you know, I posted that video I got shy for like a half a year until I posted my second video in like 2015. Oh, and, wow. and, uh, and yeah. And then, um, the chargers and the, you know, I kind of knew for a while the chargers were going to end up moving. So I kind of said, you know, I'm, I just hit my thirties. Uh, I want to do something different while I can want to do something on my own so I could be my own boss. Um, and I, I said, I, I need to change the scenery because I've lived in San Diego my whole life. And I, as much as I love San Diego, as, as much as everyone can see that I love San Diego, I, I needed to like see a different way of life for a little bit. So uh, I love Barcelona so much. Everybody kept asking me, like, if you were to live somewhere else in the world with all your travels, where would it be? And, and it would always be Barcelona or Sydney, Australia. Well, Sydney's way expensive. <laughs> and Barcelona was just, more of my vibe and it was like it almost had a san diego vibe but it was a totally different culture so uh i ended up moving to barcelona in september of 2016 and i said okay this is when i'm gonna actually go full on with my youtube channel and uh and i that's when i started um vlogging i would say it, it, that was more of a vlog type of uh um time in my youtube career where i was just putting out random stuff and just trying to figure out who I was. And, and, uh, I was trying to gain a following, but I, I really wasn't understanding the business of YouTube the way that I, I do now. So, uh, yeah. And it, and it grew, it grew. I started getting people playing, uh, you know, watching me for Barcelona videos and my biggest video, I think it's got almost, man, I don't, I don't know, 400,000 views now. I'm not sure. I haven't looked, but, uh, it, it's a top five, uh, foods to eat in Barcelona and uh, and yeah that's kind of how it became and then when the when the pandemic hit um, I, I had to come home to San Diego my plan was to be half Barcelona half San Diego um, and when I, I when the pandemic hit you know it was kind of dark for a while for a few months you know my channel went went basically on a downturn and when I felt comfortable enough to go out and start covering uh, San Diego beaches. I started seeing people from San Diego or wanting to visit San Diego, starting to follow my channel and the numbers starting to go up. And uh, so I started doing all these different types of, you know, travel tips, travel guides, focusing on, you know, just the micro communities around San Diego. And, and yeah, eventually I did a hidden gems video and the channel just exploded to where, it is now, and you know, by the weekend, I'm going to hit thirty thousand subscribers. So, um, no doubt, <laughs> I'm excited, man. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, yeah, you mentioned Barcelona, and you went there also to teach English, right? Yeah, yeah. I talk. Uh, I taught English to some really young kids, like around five, six years old. Um, that was just my first year, along with middle school to high school kids. Um, I, I taught at two schools. Um, during the, uh, my first year and then another two schools on my second year. And uh, it was great. Like these kids were awesome. They were always curious about, you know, a, a, a kid from California and, you know, an English speaker too. And it was cool because uh, the, the, the coordinators I worked with my first year was a music coordinator. So I was teaching 
I wasn't teaching English. I was actually in a music class. So I, I basically brought over like the American culture of music and just, just talked about that type of stuff and, uh, and, and the music that I loved uh, back here that they may not necessarily know of. And what kind of music is that? Um, oh man, I, for me, it was a, it's a wide array of stuff, you know, like my parents, my dad, he, he, um, and his brothers, they have a band and growing up, you know, the Eagles were a big inspiration for me, the Beatles, um, you know, ACDC and all those, you know, you know, I, I love all the oldies and stuff growing up. And, uh, but for me, I'm a big pop, like, you know, we talk pop culture and I love, you know, I love all types of music. And, um, so, you know, I talk about Bruno Mars. I talk about Justin Timberlake. I talk about, you know, all the rap music I, I listen to. So I, I try to give them a nice wide array of, of music because I think my playlist is pretty, uh, pretty vast when it comes to music. So, um, <laughs> you know, I talk to them about, you know, Spanish music that I listen to, like, you know, Enrique Iglesias, you know, he's half Filipino. So I'd always <laughs> have love for Enrique. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now looking back at your, your, your vlogging history, um, it looks like it took you quite a while to sort of find your voice and, and to be comfortable in front of the camera. Um, like, can you sort of maybe talk about that and maybe give some tips for people who are sort of maybe starting out their, their vlog for the very first time? Oh yeah, definitely. It, it's definitely a learning curve. It's not something that, you know, people can just pick up. I mean, there's some that can, you know, like I, I've met a couple of YouTubers that don't even have a background in like television, film and media that are actually pretty good. Um, but for them, I, I'm still thinking like they, they may, they, they may be really good now, but I bet you two, three years down the line, they're going to be even better than they are. So, you know, it's just, it's just all about comfortability, comfortability. I can't speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> comfortability and, uh, and just getting used to it. Like a lot of people that watch my older videos, they're like, wow, your voice, your tone has changed so much throughout the years. And, you know, I could still remember when I first started, like it was still kind of awkward and I didn't know how to speak uh, to the camera. And now it's just like, I turn it on and I try to like enunciate and pronounce stuff the way that I, I that I would usually talk, I guess. And, uh, and just, no, not how I usually talk, but just like, like, just make it clear for people to understand, especially when I was teaching English, I was like, okay, I need to talk slower and I need to pronounce right, these right. words slower. So like, I figured that, uh, you know, naturally that started happening on my YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, as I, you know, it, it was like, like I said, 2016, 2017, I didn't really know where I was going. Like, like I knew I wanted to do a world travel type YouTube channel and feature food, travel tips and all that. But then I noticed that YouTube is very, uh, it's very niche. And, and like, unless that, unless like you can find a niche for yourself, it's really hard to grow your following. And, uh, when I finally started focusing on Barcelona and just like doing Barcelona tips, instead of just like goofing around with my roommates, um, I started to see a little bit of growth. And then when I came back to San Diego and I applied just you know, my, me being born and raised here and my knowledge being here my whole life, that's when I found out, okay, San Diego is my niche. Like San Diego is what I know most about, which, uh, some, something I have the most experience, knowledge and authority about. And that, that's what people like. They, 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 they like that. I actually know the town, unlike me living in a foreign country where it does still get views, but I don't really know the town as much and I don't know the culture. I'm like learning it along with the audience more like uh, um, other than me being here in San Diego. And like, I already know this stuff and I'm kind of just like telling them, Hey, this is great. Um, and not just discovering it along with the audience. So I don't know, like people like that more like that. I have the, uh, that, that, experience and knowledge about my hometown and i think it's starting i think that's why the channel is starting to blow up and uh las vegas too i i grew up going to las vegas so i know i have a lot of family there and uh i think a lot of people are liking my perspective on vegas because i have so much uh so much of uh life experience around there in my 20s all right <laughs> <laughs> um 
I mean, you're no stranger to doing collaboration videos like your recent, like you mentioned Las Vegas with, uh, uh, with Norma Helly and, and Dan versus world. Um, who's on your short list for potential collaborators down the road? And do you have any sort of dream collaborations? Oh man. Uh, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, you know, like what I've learned is like when it's come to collaborating with other YouTubers, um, I've, I always came with the attitude of I just wanted to make a network of people that are, are doing the same thing or similar things that I'm doing and just get to know them. I'm like, you, you know, like there's some people that want to collaborate and just like for the sake of getting that other channel subscribers to follow you. And that's great. But for me, it's more of a social thing and like getting to connect with people because being a youtuber can be lonely at times you know like you can't like sometimes you're doing videos all by yourself or you know you'll interview people in different places so like um yeah getting to meet norma it was uh and and become friends with her over the last couple months um i think that's great and honestly like i just look forward to collaborating more with her um and focusing on just the you know building that that vibe we have in our videos so uh, yeah it does look like you guys have a good relationship and it comes it shows in, in your videos yeah so i think that i would really enjoy doing more stuff with her whether it be on her channel or mine um i just think that you know we kind of have uh, a lot of like-minded um similarities with growing the channel and the content we want to put out and I, I think that like when i'm in vegas um, that that's just a great way to go, and the same with Dan too. Like Dan was just a was was just a viewer. He was a Jaycationer, and uh, you know he commented a lot on my videos. And um, and I never linked up with him on a collab until like just like late last year. And he was he was a viewer for like a couple years. He he said he's he 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 found me in like 2018 when he was going to the Philippines. So oh, wow. like. So like, yeah, and I met Dan, we hit it off and, you know, he's really cool. He does a lot of cool food, food videos around Vegas and, and he's from the Inland Empire, Empire in, uh, in Riverside. So, so yeah, like, like Dan's become a good friend. We talk all the time and, um, that, that's really the, the whole key for me. It's just like building cool relationships with people. Um, Haley, Haley Dasevich, she's, she's a big YouTuber. Um, I know her through my friend Jacko. Um, she's got like 600k, 600k subs now, and she's just blown up. And uh, we've never really done a collab. She's been on my channel, but we've I've like never really like done a like a video collab with her. So I would say like doing something with Haley down the line would be really cool. And and of course her brother, her brother Will, who I've met once. But uh, I, I had I had one too many uh, Johnny Walker blue shots that night, so uh, <laughs> so I wasn't really uh, exactly coherent. <laughs> Must have been a fun night. <laughs> oh, it was my last night in the Philippines too. That was the, oh wow. Yeah, it was my last night in the Philippines. I was say Johnny Walker blue man to that level. <laughs> oh man, like, like so my like my friend uh, uh, Daniel Marsh, like he you know he used to do like modeling in the Philippines, and he's actually a pretty big vlogger. And I met him out on my last night. Uh, this other YouTuber, Brett, Brett Maverick, he lives in Canada now. He's Canadian. Um, they, you know, they like to party. They like to hang out. And like, they know, you know, they know like, you know, Filipino celebrities, models and stuff like that. And we ended up going to some like uh, um, Filipino celebrities birthday party. Who You know, I don't, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> I'm just there to have a good time. And yeah, they had like a Costco sized Johnny Walker blue right in front of me. And I'm like, I'm not going to let that go to waste. No one's drinking it. And they, they kept telling me to drink it. So I drank it. Right. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what else are you going to do? <laughs> what else am I going to do? You're going to put what a $300 bottle in front of me. I'm, well, I mean, you know, that must be 300 bucks because it's the max, max size. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it was during the world cup too. And we went in, I remember I was, I was, uh, we went in over to, uh, Miss universe's, um, condo and watched the uh, world cup game over at her house at like four in the morning and my mm. flight was at like nine in the morning and i was i was supposed to, yeah, well i made it but i i was barely functional <laughs> that, that's 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 the point where you so sort of say i guess i'm not gonna sleep i'll, I'll just sleep on the plane yep <laughs> yep 
<laughs> and 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 actually, the hangover remedy was uh, when I, when I tried my first ever ramen bowl in uh, in Japan, in actual Japan, not my first ramen bowl in life, but ramen oh, gotcha. in, in Japan like, in right. Tokyo. So <laughs> ichiran. Do you remember what kind of? Oh, what, you know, do you remember what kind of ramen you got? It was uh, ichiran spicy pork ramen. And you ordered it from the vending machine and then you sit down at a booth and you don't even see the person and they just like put the ramen through a curtain. Uh, I filmed it. Yeah, I filmed it. I, I did it in my uh, – my, I did like two Tokyo videos and that was one of it. I'll have you, to look for that one. You could that totally, sounds interesting. You could totally <laughs> see my hungoverness over there too for sure. Um. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Dan versus World and how he used to comment in your YouTube comments. But uh, talk to me about community building. I think you do a pretty good job, you know, interacting with your fans. I mean, you I see you comment on your own uh, YouTube videos. Um, and you also have a, a group on, on Facebook called uh, It's Always Sunny in San Diego. Um, why do you feel the need to go the extra step to engage with your community? I think that's the most important part. Like, I don't think I'd be doing this if I wasn't trying to connect with people around the world and make a difference, you know, like I don't like the whole world, the the word travel influencer, but if people are going to call you that, you got to influence them in some sort of way. So like if you're not engaging with them and at least trying to talk to them, they're taking your, they're taking 20 minutes out of their day to watch my video and they're going to comment on it. And I don't answer. Like, I feel like that's kind of rude. And uh, it's getting a little more challenging now that, uh, you know, the channel's getting bigger, but I'm trying as best as I can, especially on my live streams. I feel like the live streams are really important because I'm able to converse with people in real life and, uh, and build that connection that way. But, you know, if, if I can make somebody's day by suggesting a ramen spot or a, or a pizza place um, I, I feel like it's worth worthwhile, and that, that's that's a, a, a minuscule influence, right? But it's a positive influence. It's a really small, you know, effect that you make on a person. But you know, I'm not I'm not doing this channel to like uh, you know talk about life influence. I'm talking about you know food and travel. So if I can help somebody on food and travel. Um, and just make their day, make them smile. I think that goes all the, you know, that goes a long way. And uh, it took a while. It took a while to build this type of, you know, um, this type of following and community that I uh, that I'm I'm currently building. And hopefully, it's still growing. And I, I could see it growing. But uh, you know, when I was living in Barcelona and I'd do a live stream, you know, I'd have like, I'd be lucky to have eleven people or even seven people on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it all changed really when i bought this i said you know i'm going to invest uh in buying an iphone 12 pro max and then i'm going to start live streaming around san diego and uh that's when the it all changed in terms of my engagement with my fans because now that enabled me to um, talk to people in real time and and kind of build that relationship and rapport with people. So it's it's really a mix of these doing these live streams and also uh, interacting in my chats or in my uh, descri- uh, my comment section with people that that may have questions or just want to talk because it, you know it, it it means a lot to them that you know their favorite YouTuber they're watching actually replies to them. So and it's all about positivity and and um, you know it, it, you'll get you know, your few percent of negative comments. But, you know, my rule on that is don't light, don't feel the fire. Don't light that fire. Um, If somebody's either making, you know, disparaging remarks to you or somebody that's in the video, um, you can just block them from the channel and, you know, who cares? Get rid of them. Don't, don't answer, just get rid of them. But, you know, there's times where I'll, I'll be a little smart with people, but not, not, not in a way of like, you know, being negative at them, but, you know, just, just kind of defending yourself a little bit. Right. <laughs> and, and you have to do that sometimes. I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> yeah, every now and then, like, you know, every now and then, you know, there's some, there, there's something you can say. So, <laughs> you, so you, you mentioned, it. yeah, you, you mentioned iPhone. Um, what, what other kind of gear do you use to, uh, to, to create your videos? Um, so, so I, I, started using the DJ Osmo Pocket, which is like a mini gimbal stabilizer camera. And, mm-hmm. and uh, it's like a pocket camera. 
And I thought it was cool because, you know, there's, there's situations where you just want to have a small setup and you don't want like that much attention drawn to you. I mean, you still have like a mini stick pointing at you, but like, it's not as crazy as a bigger DSLR camera, you know, out in public. So, uh, I use that. I, I use that. I've, I've kind of laid off on that a little bit. I've been trying to be more quality. So I've tried to use my, my, um, Canon M50, which, uh, failed me last week while I was doing a video with Norma. Um, <laughs> the memory card wasn't working, but I try to use that more, especially when I'm sitting down because it, it has really great quality. And, uh, mm-hmm. I use the iPhone 12 pro max on, uh, on B-roll shots, like food B-roll shots, because iPhone 12 uh, Pro Max, man, it takes amazing shots. Like it's mm-hmm. crazy how how great this camera makes take shots. And when you're live streaming, you use Streamyard, correct? Um, I use Streamyard when I'm doing like a sit down live stream, uh-huh. like like tomorrow. Um, I'm doing my 30k subscriber live stream celebration, and I made a deal with a brewery. Burgian, I can say it now because yeah, I'm about to announce it after. I'm going to this place called Burgian Brewery in uh, in Carlsbad. They're, they're in Carlsbad. I've yeah. been there. I used to I used to go there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, their marketing guy watches my channel, and he invited me to the grand opening of their new location in Little Italy, and they want me to do stuff with them. And um, I said, hey, that'd be a perfect live stream for me to do a sit down stream yard beer tasting slash 30k celebration. So. Um, tomorrow I'm actually going to go, uh, Friday, May 7th, I'm going to go there and, uh, and do that live stream. But when I'm out and about, I, uh, doing my walk, walkabout and my, my skating live streams, I use uh prism live studio. Gotcha. Um, and, that, and is, that, that makes you do it in 1080p. Oh, uh, I see. Um, yeah, I mean, for, <clears throat> for the average viewer, they might think that, uh, you have a whole team behind you, but you are your solo operation, right? It's just me, man. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I mean, you know, I've the, the only times I've really maybe asked for some sort of help is, you know, uh, for my logo, which my best friend designed for me, or you know, a couple a couple of t-shirt designs. Uh, this uh, other YouTuber's name is Tony Wang. He's got a channel for his kids. It's a kids channel called uh, Man. Well. I can't think of the name of this channel, but his, he, he designed my uh, California burrito t-shirt. So he's really nice. talented. So I've only like, you know, gotten help for graphic design work. But other than right. that, yeah, it's all me. All the back end SEO, all the, all the posting and all the editing. Yeah, it's all me. So is this like your, your full-time gig or, or do you also work at the same time? I do a few. Um, uh, I do a few like, you know, side gigs and stuff videography gigs in 2020 it was really hard i mean i wasn't nothing was happening in 2020 um but like you know videography like whether it's like a football camp or something like that you know or or doing stuff for other realtors around town it helps so it's a mix of different things as a freelancer you know that you know four or five different projects (laughs) that's kind of how you make your uh Make that cake. <laughs> <laughs> um, how does it feel when uh, you meet your fans and they recognize you, I guess, in public? I'm, I'm still getting used to it. I mean, it's <laughs> it's really cool. Like, I, I, I've had nothing but positive experiences. Like, um, especially at Seaport Village, there's this one day, I think it was just because I was out there a week after I posted my Seaport Village video and people saw me. Um, I had like five or six different people all say, ask me if I was Jaycation and like wanted to take pictures, wanted to be on camera. And I just really thought that was amazing. That was cool. And uh, I'll, I'll never get used to it. And I'll always be, you know, I'll always be me. So I'll always welcome people coming up to me and stuff. So um, I think it's great. And I'm actually going to do my first meetup next week. So I'm excited for that. Working with, oh, nice. uh, I'm working with a Filipino, uh, a Filipino American owned um, apparel brand called Original Goodstock, and uh, they're having a pop up shop in Paradise Hills with a Filipino restaurant. And uh, they invited me over, and I and uh, said, "Hey, why don't you do a meetup?" 
And I was like, oh yeah, that would be great. So it's a nice mix of a, of of their their pop up, where they're going to be possibly selling um, some some limited edition Jcation gear. <laughs> oh, nice. So uh, so yeah, and then I'll, I'll be there just you know taking pictures, talking to people that watch my channel, and just uh, and filming too. I'll be doing a Paradise Hills video. That's that's awesome, brother. Um, now, once the pandemic is over and it's safe to travel abroad, uh, what are some places you want to visit? Like places I haven't been yet, or would it be places that uh, I've been to that I want to go back to? Um, either, either or. Um, first things first, I want to go back to Barcelona and uh, see my my friends and people that I consider family over there. So Barcelona is definitely back on my list. Um, I do want to go back to the Philippines, um, see my grandma, see my family over there and, uh, do some videos over in the Philippines. And, um, before all this, I really wanted to go to Japan again and spend like an actual two weeks and not just 24 hours there. So that was kind of on my list. Um, I actually, there's like no new places I really want to go to right now. It's just places that I've already been to that I want to rediscover like right. i'm always like i'm a big paris person so I, I paris is always on my mind <laughs> and so i'd like to go to <laughs> paris but for now i think 2021 is going to be all domestic um i'm, I'm going to be doing vegas once a month for the foreseeable future just to build content um in august i'm going to Kauai for my cousin's wedding so i'll be doing some videos over in Kauai and and oahu and uh, New York, New York City is something I'd like to to go to, and uh, and Seattle too. So those are places I, you know, so many places I want to return to. Uh, but you know, undiscovered places. Ah, I don't know, I don't know. I got like maybe Thailand, um, and I was supposed to go to Sicily for a uh, for a travel bloggers convention, and um, I'd like to go to Sicily um, for that when it actually happens so yeah hopefully i get to go over there i think catania is the name of the city where mount uh is it mount vesuvius no mount vesuvius is in the mainland but there's a oh mount etna mount etna Mm, is over there so that's kind of where i want to where i want to go um how do how do you stay organized being a, a solo operation and i guess secondly um a lot of creatives that have found success are the ones that seem to have set themselves up uh, to sort of play the long game. Um, what are some things that you've done to put yourself in the best position for long-term success? Oh man. Like when you start YouTube, you got to have that mentality from the start that it's the long game, that it's not going to pop off right away. It might, it might not, but I've seen way too many creators and too many friends of mine that I've, I've come across that end up quitting after maybe a year or two of YouTubing because their numbers or just subscriber numbers aren't the way they, they thought it would be. And um, you need to know that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And if your numbers aren't showing, you got to get creative and find ways and see what people are actually watching on your channel and what people are actually like um, wanting to watch. And when you actually understand that more, um, that's when you'll start to grow and you'll you're st- you'll start to niche things down because I'll say niche all day and it's true like like uh, there's this youtuber Benji Travis um, he his wife is like the biggest daily vlogger uh, it's Judy's life and um, he has a channel called video influencers and they always talk about stuff like this and when I met him for the first time at a vidcon over in Anaheim he told me, it's all about niching down your channel. And I was like, how can I niche my channel down if I want to do so many things? And uh, it, it takes a while. It takes a while to learn how to niche that channel down. Um, so, yeah, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You always got to find ways to change your channel and be creative and, and, and do stuff. And um, meet people along the way that will help you and positively impact you in your life. And, like... When it comes to – what was I going to say? It's like off the top of my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I started YouTube, I didn't know a single YouTube creator. 
now I can now, now I can tell safely say that you know some of my closest friends are are YouTube creators. So you know you're gonna you might go in this YouTube journey by yourself to start and uh, just be open to meeting new people and just trying to get to know them, whether it's watching their videos and then eventually meeting them in person. And um, it, it it really helps you like learn from other people. Like I'm learning new stuff from like just uh, filming with Norma and seeing the way she she films her her videos, how she she's really well prepared with her videos and how she does her takes and how she does her camera shots and how she edits. So like, you know, constantly learning stuff like that from other YouTubers and, uh, you know, same thing with Dan, seeing how he's, you know, um, run and gun with his shots. And, um, yeah, that, that's just ways that, that, uh, you continue to learn how to improve on, on your craft is go, uh, mixing with other people like them. Um, I have a friend, he's a New York YouTuber. Um, his name is John Barr, here be Barr. And we talk every day. And uh, he, he was with me from the start. Like we, we were Facebook friends and we were on the Facebook group together. And, um, and yeah, he, he, he tells me all this stuff, uh, you know, the back end of the business. And, uh, and he's got almost 200,000 subscribers now. And, you know, we're still the same, same friends that we were at the beginning when we both had like, you know, a thousand subscribers or whatever it was when we met. Yeah, I think, I think the re- the reason for your success is no accident. I mean, you've put yourself in a in a good position because, I think, based on my conversation with you so far, I mean, you have a a good head on your shoulders. You know when to pivot. I mean, especially during the pandemic when you sort of had to change the the, the sort of scope of your of your content and sort of like you said, you know, niche down and and make it more uh, specific about San Diego. Um, and you're continually learning new things, and I think that's a that's a great mindset to have. Uh, especially in this day and age, when um, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of a lot of content out there uh, that's sort of similar, and you need to sort of differentiate differentiate yourself and and continually improve. Oh, exactly! Like you hit that spot on. Like with like look at look at my Vegas stuff. Now, like I'm getting a lot of people from like other channels that watch Vegas videos because there's like a big Vegas like vlogger community over there, right? But the feedback that I'm getting from a lot of these new people that are watching these other vloggers about my Vegas content is that I'm bringing a new fresh perspective that the other people don't necessarily bring. Now, I'm not taking business away from them. I'm trying, I'm actually even trying to like, like up them too, right? Um, but, but they're saying like, hey, you're different. You're not the same as, you know, a channel like Turn It Up World. Um, they're a Vegas based channel. Or a channel like uh, this dude Pompsy, you know, they're they're all different. I'm, I'm different from them, and they have their own they have their own crowd and their own audience, and I have my own crowd, my own audience. And you know, if if some people from their their channels want to mix in with mine, great. But my goal is to just show my perspective and and not be a different channel. And I never was trying to be a different channel. You know, there might have been a Casey Neistat era of me in 2016 (laughs) but that was still me just trying to figure out who i was on youtube and and then once i found out my best way to put out videos um it just became me it it, it became my style i mean there's only certain ways people can film videos so um but i think my personality is what i try to i try to show to people that you know i'm different than than others and you know that's i feel like that's what that attract people to my channel hopefully i I think that's definitely how it is i mean um i think i remember like i I don't know which video it was but it was definitely your 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 personality and the way you sort of um i guess carried the video that made me want to subscribe because i was like this guy's pretty cool i want to i want to listen and learn more from from what he has to offer so um and and like i said earlier in, in the podcast like i'm surprised that it took me this long to find you <laughs> <laughs> yeah man you know um yeah it's cool like you know i saw you know when we started you know chatting and stuff i saw that you had this podcast and i was like i follow a lot of comic con um like on twitter like twitter i'm not really like 
it's not jcation focused per se it's just right. my personal account and like if i do have jcation stuff i'll put it on there but like i follow twitter for everything for sports comic con news and so i i have a nice like base of comic con uh um accounts that i follow and uh yeah when i saw your hall h thing i was like okay i gotta follow this guy and uh <laughs> and uh yeah i think we'd have a lot to talk about especially when it came to like comic con and and everything yeah, definitely. I mean, that, there's definitely more to talk about on a, on a on subsequent podcast for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, like. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say like you know the Comic Con the that's coming up in November or whatever they want to. Oh yeah, whatever yeah. they want to call it. Like, I don't even know if I have a pass to that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I, I I still rolled over my old pass from uh, 2000. Uh, last year <laughs> yeah like that was my first media pass i've ever uh, like first media pass as uh like i've had media passes in the past from my uncle but yeah. like as a professional that's my first media pass and of course the pandemic hits right so, right but i think that's good for 2021 so yeah it should be so um, i guess we'll take a break and uh, we'll do a thunder round which is our sort of uh, round of random questions um my first question is uh Describe yourself using a color. Powder blue. Powder blue. I know why you said that. <laughs> um, and that sort of leads into my second question. Uh, who's your favorite San Diego Charger? Uh, San Diego Charger of all time, Philip Rivers. Uh, you want to go classic we, Junior Seau because he's an Oceanside boy. But um, right. I, had a, I had a great relationship with Philip, so he'll yeah, always be in my heart. I can't believe <laughs> I can't believe it that his career just went just like that, just in the blink of an eye. Like I remember when I first saw him play, like after Drew Brees left, and I was like, "Whoa, this, it's all that time passed already." <laughs> yeah, I wish he won a Super Bowl. Didn't win. Yeah, his, me too. His final years in up up north. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the fish taco is part of the San Diego experience. Um, what other foods do you think are a good representation of what our city has to offer? Uh, the California burrito, uh-huh. um, street tacos, is it's got to be definitely be Mexican themed, right? Um, <laughs> and craft, I know it's not food, but craft beer, yeah, um, that's that's huge. And uh, the fish sandwich, especially oh, uh, Point Loma seafoods fish sandwich, that's classic. Oh, have you tried have you tried their their scallop sandwich? Oh yeah, I've tried all of them. They're so okay. good over there. And yeah, Mitch, I Mitch, Mitch's, I just uh, discovered re- recently, and Mitch's is amazing. That's I need to try store. that spot still. It's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah, I'll definitely add that to my list. Um, in terms of movies, TV shows, video games, and or books, what has been your comfort food during this pandemic? I mean, do you have time to watch anything else? Or, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you always seem so busy. <laughs> Um, believe it or not, I, I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, uh-huh. I watch a lot of IRL in real life streamers just so I can learn. Yeah. So I've been watching uh, a lot of action kid. I watch my buddy here be bar. I watch uh, Norma, but I do watch a lot of TV still. Um, I, I still make time for the flash. Right. Um, arrow was my favorite show until it got canceled, but you know, it's all good. Um, I still, what else do I watch? Uh, this is us. I watch this is us and Magnum PI. <laughs> so those are, those are kind of my, my comfort shows. And, uh, and yeah, if you're asking for comfort food, what am I eating? I, I, uh, cheese it and uh, thrifty chocolate malt ice cream. That's the stuff. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Man, cheese. It's reminds me of when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm still a kid. So I'm going to eat cheese. It's till, till the day I die. <laughs> Um, if you had the ability to time travel, uh, who is someone that you would want to have a meal with? Um, and where would you take this person for lunch or dinner? Uh, this is going to sound, uh, a little, a little dark, (laughs) but I I would actually time travel and take my, uh, and and meet my uncle Bob, who is a big uh, inspiration that passed away when I was 16. And, Uh uh, and I would time travel and actually try to take him here just for one day and have a meal with him in vegas and show them uh you know what's become of uh become of me and become of our family so that's mm. that would be my uh 
thing. Is that is that is that a grim answer? Were, were you looking for like a no 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 like that's, a, that's like not grim at all or a... <laughs> no no it's totally open ended. You know it's it's whatever you want nice. to say. I mean nice. And then yeah, then no, I, I'd also say I'll also let, let, let's do a, a brighter note. I would say um, I would go back to 1985 and meet Michael J. Fox and just <laughs> and actually take him to like. Um, and take him to one of the you know the places in Back to the Future, like you know one of those diners, and actually have a meal with him, and just talk to the actual Michael J. Fox when he was in his prime. Uh, uh, would you put it on his tab? I'm just joking. Oh, um, ha- oh yeah. You can't have a Pepsi. <laughs> you can't have a Pepsi for free. You got to pay for something. <laughs> um, it's closing time at the local karaoke bar. Uh, you get to sing the last song. What do you sing? Um, I only know one song, and that's Johnny Be Good. Well, no, I know a lot of songs, <laughs> but I would sing Johnny Be Good, and I would sing or Hotel California. Oh wow, that's an interesting mix. <laughs> but yeah, um, Johnny Be Good for sure. And 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 you guys can kind of guess why, you know, Back to the Future, and right, right. I sang that uh, growing up with my dad's and my uncle's band. Oh, okay. so I'd always sing that at like you know family parties and and stuff like that. And my, my, my grandpa's name was John. So, uh, yeah, it's just always a happy song to sing. Mm -hmm. Um, you meant, you sort of touched on this earlier. Um, and you know, San Diego is such an awesome place to live in. Um, what other places would you consider moving to besides, I guess, Barcelona and Sydney, Australia? Ooh, other places, Vegas, um, Vegas, cause it's so much cheaper. (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> um what else new york city there was a time where i wanted to live in new york not for good uh-huh. but like you know i would consider it um paris would be cool and an island in greece like like santorini i know it's like super touristy but i really like santorini um, you mentioned skydiving earlier. Um, tell me about your, your skydiving experiences. Oh, man. So when I, I sky, went skydiving my first time, I was in the Walt Disney College program in Orlando, Florida. And uh, me and my roommates, we all went skydiving. And, um, yeah, it was in Orlando. Everything was flat. You know, all you, know, all you could see is swamp. And I pretty much had my eyes closed for half of the, the jump. So, um, but it is still fun and I, I still enjoyed it, but I said, you know, this, if I ever went skydiving again, it would have to be somewhere beautiful with beautiful scenery. So I went to New Zealand in 2016 to Queenstown and I Mm -hmm. was like, wow, this would be beautiful. The beautiful lake they have over there, the mountainous range, you know, this where the, the Hobbit was, was filmed and Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. So I said, okay, I'm going to keep my eyes open from the time I jump all the way to the bottom. And uh, yeah, second time was so much more enjoyable. And that, that, that feel you get, that initial jump, it's crazy. It's a crazy feeling. And uh, I, I would definitely go skydiving again, probably like in Hawaii or something. Yeah. Um, I guess you may have already answered this question, but what pop culture universe would you want to be a character in? Pop culture universe that I'd want to be a character in. Ooh, like you, you, you probably think I'd say like Berlanti verse or something like that, right? Right, right. <laughs> I would probably put myself into a teen drama universe, like 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 a show like One Tree Hill. And, oh, and, and, wow. and then be able to like, you know, actually like date some of these girls, like bro. How, how are your, how are your basketball skills? <laughs> um, my dad was a great basketball player. I'm more, of a, <laughs> I'm a baseball player. Like, as you guys can see, I'm a big Padre fan and I played baseball yeah. my whole life. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it'd be one tree hill, but I'd be on the baseball team. I'd, right. I'd put myself in that, in that universe for sure. Or I would put myself wow. in uh, Marty McFly's, uh, universe. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah speaking of one tree hill uh, the person one of the one of the characters is married to uh the guy in uh the walking dead um the one that plays um negan yeah jeffrey dean morgan and uh yeah he married peyton sawyer or hillary yeah, yeah. hillary burton <laughs> hillary right. burton morgan yeah she used to be that's an right. mtv dj that's right and, yeah uh, 
and she used to do TRL back in the day. And, you know, mm-hmm. I grew up in the TRL days, you know, NSYNC, uh, DMX, Backstreet Boys and all them. Um, no, rest, so, in, rest in peace, DMX. Yeah, rest in peace, DMX. And uh, I was, uh, they used to do summer uh, beach house TRLs here in San Diego over in Mission Beach. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing Hillary Burton by like uh, uh, one of the beach houses next to the giant dipper. And uh, back to, back in the day, before she was in on One Tree Hill, she was still right. just a she was still just a DJ. And it was crazy how she became a DJ. Like I think she was just like on TRL as like a fan. And then, <laughs> I don't know if that was staged or not, but then eventually she became a DJ, and it was crazy. Maybe maybe they, they that's how they marketed it. Like like she was a fan turned DJ, but I don't know. I don't know if that was true or staged. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um after a long day of video editing and watching youtube videos <laughs> uh what beer do you crave to sort of wind down with Ooh, um lately i've been on like a lager slash pilsner type uh type feel so i've been drinking like kona brewing their their lager but uh i really enjoy hazy ipas so I, I really like drinking hazies, whether it's like a Ballast Point beer or Harlan Brewing. So yeah, those are that's what I've been drinking a lot of lately. Yeah, that's one thing I miss. I haven't. I used to go to a lot of breweries uh, before the pandemic with some friends, but it's been a while since I've been to been to one. You know, as as a just to just to enjoy and have a beer. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like my my best friend, he's finally like you know we're both fully vaccinated finally. Oh, and, nice! And he just had a newborn, so um, he's like, "Dude, once it's fully kicked in for him, which it is now, he's like, dude, we're gonna finally have a, a beer at a brewery." So, I'm actually gonna try to connect with my best friend this weekend or next couple weekends and try to get a beer with him. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I get my first shot next next week. Oh, nice, man! Congrats. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, um, it feels good, man. I'm telling you, like for me, like especially doing these YouTube videos. Now I can finally just comfortably say, Hey guys, you know, I'm still doing safe stuff, but I'm vaccinated now. So yeah. Can't wait till we get more, more people vaccinated. Yep. Yep. I want things to get, you know, back to normal even more, you know, it it was nice to be out with my dad and my little brother in Vegas, you know, cause we're all, we're all vaxxed too now. So um, it was good to have some sort of normalcy and like a vacation, a boys trip, without like, you know, worrying about, you know, that type of stuff. Right. Um, what's, uh, what's one thing your fans would be surprised to know about you? <laughs> that they'd be surprised <laughs> to know about me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I like to watch a lot of TV, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of TV shows that you wouldn't expect a, me to watch. Like, like this is us. And, Right. <laughs> I'm very musically, you know, I really love music. So, like, you know, I've been listening to a lot of music lately. So, um, uh, do you know how to play any instruments? I don't. I'm uh, not, that's not my talent for sure. My mom tried to put me through uh, piano lessons when I was a kid, didn't work out. <laughs> um, before I hit Pure Rudy, I could, some, I, I made honor choir and I thought I could sing. And uh, now I, I know I can't sing, but sometimes I still sing. <laughs> it's all about the heart, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So when, when I have a couple of those IPAs in me, I'll. That's right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I I'll, I'll, I'll belt out a little bit of Justin Bieber, or Timberlake. <laughs> I was singing a little bit in Vegas because I was drinking before my live streams, and I did a, a few renditions of "Sexy Back." <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, nice. Um, May is Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, what does it mean to you to be Filipino American? Oh man, I mean that's who I am. That's where you know my parents came from, and you know growing up, Phil Am living in Mira Mesa, which is a pretty um, high populated Filipino community. Um, Otherwise known as Manila Mesa. Manila Mesa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think it, it really means a lot to me, and it's, it, I'm really proud to like you know bring up a lot of the other philams around here, um, around San Diego and, uh, especially the ones that have, you know, like-minded, um, business, uh, thoughts like me, um, like original Goodstock, Randy Moss. He's, uh, he's, uh, 
entrepreneur that's trying to you know grow his streetwear business. So I like I like bringing people like him up um, and other like Philam owned businesses that are around San Diego. You know I like to feature them um, on my channel and not just Philam, but you know everybody, every every yeah. business in San Diego. But you know when 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 you see other Philams that are, that are you know trying to grow their businesses, it really means a lot to to show them and showcase them on my channel and stuff. So it's cool to connect with other Filipino Americans with the same passion. Yeah, I think um, you, you've done a, a really awesome job in showcasing a lot of small businesses here in San Diego, especially as, uh, as San Diego tries to recover, um, you know, after the pandemic. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a big, uh, a big thing that I like to do is like, you know, some of these restaurants may not have be as popular and maybe struggling during the pandemic. And, you know, they, they want, they might, some people might not know that these places exist. And if they watch my channel, they're going to know it. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's like a few Ube dessert places that I like to, I like to check out like Snoice over in, uh, Paradise Hills. Oh yeah. I was, I just went to their new location in, um, uh, in Claremont. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. They just the opened day. one, huh? Yeah. yeah. And I met the owner there. He was a really nice dude. Um, there's another Ube thing. I think it's called, is it, uh, trying to think of the name, but they're in like this, the Mira Mesa farmer's market, Mira Mesa high school. And, uh-huh. uh, yeah, they make really good Ube desserts too. And, nice. um, their owner is really cool. So like, and then, uh, um, Manapono, which is like, a San Diego, um, it's like a, it's a cool hat. It's like, it looks like the, it has SD on it, but it's not the Padres logo. It's like a cursive SD. It's kind of mm-hmm. like a, like a Hawaii, you know, that Hawaii hat that has H I on it. Oh yeah. Um, but it's like San Diego's version. Um, that guy's it's Phil Am, Filipino American owned too. Um, this guy, Ryan, he actually went to Mira Mesa high like I did. And, uh, he graduated and played baseball for uh, a year, the year I came in the Mira Mesa. So like, it was really cool to connect with him. And now I rock, my Napono gear on my videos just to, <laughs> to show love to them. And then uh, something sweet shop over in um, Seaport village. They were viewers of mine, um, Christian and his wife, Gina, and Gina's half Filipino. And um, yeah, we've been doing some cool stuff with the something sweet shop. So, uh, uh, and they've been getting a lot of business. They said from my, my Jcation videos with mentioning them. So um, it really awesome. means, it really means a lot to hear you know, them being successful and just bringing up other, other businesses around San Diego, you know, cause you know, small business is, uh, it's hard, you know, the last year people have been going through it. And, and now that there's a chance to, to, you know, get back to some sort of normalcy, it, it means a lot to, to show them. Right. So, um, what are your top three Filipino dishes that you like to eat? Sisig, um, anything ube, uh-huh. and sinigang. Oh, I love sinigang. I love the sourness in the sinigang. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think that's why I like like pickled vegetables when I go to Korean uh, oh, places, yeah, restaurants. Yeah, those are good. Yeah. That, that sourness to it. Yeah, yeah that's, uh-huh. that's amazing. <laughs> and um, and yeah, yeah, I even like, uh, like nilaga, which is oxtail. That's, uh-huh. really, that's really good as well. Um, if I gave you a million dollars, what would you do with it? Um, pay off the rest of my parents' mortgage or whatever's left of it. Make sure that house stays in our family for years to come. Um, buy a apartment in Barcelona uh-huh. and, uh, and, uh, re- invest the rest of it and, you know, try to find a girl and grow family somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> What about if I gave you a hundred dollars? Uh, you gave me a hundred dollars, I'd probably uh, buy stuff from original good stock or uh, buy a <laughs> buy a new Padre <laughs> hat or something. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the Padres never leave. <laughs> or actually, here, here, here's a good question: If you gave me a thousand dollars, you know what yeah. I do? I'd go. I'd probably buy Bruno Mars tickets uh, for for the, his uh, performances in July. Wow! How much are they going for? <laughs> Well, I look. The cheapest ticket right now is like three hundred bucks. 
Wow. Yeah, he and he's performing like six nights in July. Damn. So is Anderson um, Pack is Anderson Pack going to be there too? Oh, he he better <laughs> damn well be there singing uh, "Keep the Door <laughs> Open." Or else, I'm dude, I've been, I've been, I've it. been, I've been watching a lot of Anderson stuff lately, and he's he's really good, man. He's really talented on the drums. He can sing. Yep. Um, I I've been watching his Instagram stories. He's pretty funny. He's got like you know, it's like this, <laughs> like a little fat Korean kid doing all this training, and they make it look all like professional and stuff on his Instagram stories. It's, <laughs> it cracks me up, dude. His kid, his little son is looks so like it's hilarious. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's come a long way since uh, I guess uh being in the in the weed business man i've i've seen him i've actually seen him open for bruno and uh, i think that's how they yeah i think that's how they met i think he opened for bruno and then i think he might have actually opened for justin timberlake when i saw him in la oh wow so uh yeah yeah he's he's grown and i can't wait to wait to hear more than uh leave the door open i know they have a full right, right. album and i i know they're doing it differently too they're they're, they're only releasing one song at a time Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, did you hear what they said about that? They said that uh, no. they uh, they want to get the feel and want the public to play the song out through the few months, and then whenever they feel like <laughs> whenever they feel like leave the door open is about to die, that's when they're yeah. gonna hit you with the next one, and then they're gonna. I don't know. Do there's there's there, there's always a new cover on, on YouTube <laughs> when I when, I, when I'm around on. <laughs> yeah, I love that song. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I guess my last question uh, for the Thunder Round is um, what superpower do you wish you had? Oh, definitely time travel for sure. Yeah. would love to. And uh, not to just like, change time? the past, but just to like, just to like, you know. Are you, are you sure you wouldn't change anything? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you know, the state, the space time continuum would self-destruct if I changed too many things. <laughs> and, uh, you know. You know, the enchantment under the sea dance, you know, if your mom never kissed your dad and you'd, you'd cease to exist. So, like, I don't want I don't want that stuff to happen, you know. Like, I don't want to come back to this world and, like, things that are really good that uh, are gone because, you know, I changed something in the past that was selfish. So, <laughs> would you would you want to go to the future? Um, yeah, why not? Why not? As long as it's not Biff's 1985. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as long as it's not that 1985. But um, but yeah, I, I definitely would like to see the future. Maybe like, you know, see if I end up with some kids and grandkids and whatever. That would be cool. <laughs> um, I guess the next part of our podcast is uh, superhero shout outs. Uh, is there a person or a group of people that has helped you along the way that you'd like to uh, say thank you to? Ooh. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, well, my parents have always been, uh, you know, highly supportive. So shout out to the parents, Madi and my mom and my little brother. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely, uh, huge supporters. My best friend, Jason and his wife, Nin, they're always, you know, supporting JK and my entire family too. You know, they've always been cool. Like, you know, at first they're like, Oh, nobody watches this stuff. Like, a few of them are probably thinking that. And now that they're seeing that my numbers are growing, you know, like, there's a few of them that are starting to, you know, be like, oh, that, hey, that's really cool that you're doing what you're doing. But I've always had my cousins that have always supported me. And, like, it's so cool to see them, you know. Um, they're buying my Jaycation hoodies and wearing them and tagging them. And now that they're wearing them to, like, work and stuff, they their, their friends say, like, hey, where did you get that? I watched that channel. And, you know, they say, <laughs> oh, that's my cousin. And, uh, and it's pretty cool to see. So, like, you know, shout out to them. And, uh, you know, other YouTubers, uh, I've mentioned John Barr, I've mentioned, uh, you know, Norma lately. Um, they're all, you know, they're all people that have influenced me to like, you know, become better and challenge myself. Um, Haley is the same way. Um, you know, I haven't hung out with Haley in a while, but you know, every time we hang out, it's almost like, you know, we become, um, it's like we, we've seen, we know, known each other for years. So yeah, those are, those are some inspirations. Um, yeah. And is it, does it necessarily have to be people in my life or like people I don't know? Can it be like um, celebrities? It could be, pe- it could be anybody that, uh, that you draw inspiration from. Oh, well, or, well, or... well, for sure. Justin Timberlake, The Rock, um, Bruno Mars, <laughs> <laughs> um, Kobe, Kobe was huge. Um, yeah. so those are all, uh, inspirations that I've had throughout my life for sure. 
do you think that Rock will uh, run for president? Oh, he's got my vote. <laughs> I, whatever. I don't care what party he is. If the Rock runs, he gets my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess we'll start closing out the show. Um, uh, did we miss anything? Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, let our audience know about? Oh man, we can. I mean, we can talk about whatever, man. I still got about half hour, if if, if anything. <laughs> um, I mean, we could. I don't know. Like, I think we've talked a lot about my channel, right, and what's to come. Yeah. So, like, yeah, and you know, in the near future, we can talk about the future of my channel and stuff like sure. that. Let's do that. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot of, of Las Vegas content coming up um a lot more food focused stuff but also i'm not forgetting about san diego because you know san diego is my bread and butter it's my hometown i love this place and um i plan on doing more um more like itinerary based videos so you're gonna see like uh one day itinerary in san diego or three day itinerary in san diego and uh i'm I'm gonna try to integrate more small businesses into these videos to show love to them and um Hopefully, you know, people tune in and uh, I'm, I'm still going to keep doing these live streams because I feel like, you know, that's the best way to engage with with the viewers. And uh, and yeah, I, I just see a lot more. I, my goal is to hit that 100,000 subscribers. I know 100,000 subscribers doesn't get you money, but that was just a goal of mine to, to get that silver play button and uh, right, right. in my room. So uh, <laughs> it may have taken longer, but um, I hope to get it within the next couple of years. Well, yeah, you know, I, I know you'll reach it someday, and I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm proud and honored to be part of the, uh, the education community, and I'm, I'm supporting you all the way, brother. Oh, I appreciate it, man, and you know, dude, I appreciate you, uh, you know, uh, always coming on the chats or commenting, and you know, our our conversations on Twitter or whatever. It's always cool to have you on there, dude. So uh, we'll we'll continue that uh, here in the in the present and the future too. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to meeting you in person and, and grabbing a beer with you. Oh, yeah, man. Definitely. Let's hit up a, a brewery. What part of town are you in? What was that? What part of town do you live in? Oh, I'm in the sort of South San Diego, Chula Vista area. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. One of these days we can do something. and uh, Maybe we'll even have you on a video one of these days. Yeah, cool. I'm down. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, awesome. Well, uh, thank you once again for coming on the show. and. Um, Best of luck to you. I, I, like I said in the beginning, um, you, you'll be hitting that thirty thousand mark. Uh, I guess you might even you might have, you might even reach it before I even put this <laughs> this podcast episode out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I I hope so because I was telling my friend uh, John Barr this morning. I was like, I I set my thirty thousand live stream celebration for tomorrow, right at three uh-huh. thirty, and I was like, oh man, I still need like hundred forty plus subscribers from now until then to get it. I, I think I can get it, but it would be kind of embarrassing if I'm like just under it and I, and, and I don't have 30,000 while I'm doing that live stream, but uh-huh. I, I already have it scheduled. So I'm like, well, let's oh, wow. hope. But if not, I'm going to hit it anyways later that night. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a matter of time, man. <laughs> just a matter of time. So. Yeah. I mean, you're doing such an awesome job just providing value. So, I, you know, it's, it's no brainer. I oh, appreciate it, man. And yeah, I'll, I'll be doing a bunch of giveaways on that live stream tomorrow. So if anyone wants to tune in or if you want to try to win a giveaway, Aaron, I'll be doing a few. <laughs> cool. Well, we'll definitely look forward to that. Um, yeah. So thank you for listening to the Holly show podcast and we really appreciate it. And thanks again to our guest, uh, JJ Manicus. Uh, please give him a follow and subscribe to J on YouTube. Uh, there's a, a growing community on his Facebook group. Uh, it's always sunny in San Diego. Go check it out. Uh, we love putting the spotlight on independent pop culture pop culture creatives. If you have a suggestion for a potential guest, please let us know. Uh, you can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, YouTube, Amazon Music, Pandora, Spotify, and our website, hallh.com. If you believe in our mission to be the voice of independent creators, we would appreciate a rating, hopefully five stars, and a comment on Apple Podcasts. And please spread the word on social media using the hashtag Hall H Show. Peace, cheers, and in the words of my guest, JJ, it's Jay Traveling, JKationers. <laughs>